In this video, we're going to look at a process called prime factor decomposition, and this is sometimes called writing a number as a product of its prime factors. We're going to begin by reminding ourselves what we mean by some of the key terms. The first term we're interested in is the word factor, and that's a number that divides exactly into another without leaving a remainder. Then we have prime numbers. Those are positive integers, positive whole numbers, which have exactly two factors, one in itself. We're going to need the first few prime numbers for this video. They are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 and 13. See if you can memorise them now. Pause the video and give yourself a minute to try and remember as many as you can. OK, great. So the process we're looking at is called prime factor decomposition. And we sometimes call it writing a number as a product of its prime factors. Now, it's helpful to remember that the word product means the result we get when we multiply two numbers together. And when we write a number as a product of its prime factors, we're trying to find all the prime numbers which multiply together to make that original number. We can use a prime factor tree to do this or just a list. Let's see what this looks like. Our first example is to write the number 40 as the product of its prime factors. Now, my preferred method is to use something called a factor tree. And what we do is we start with the number 40 at the top of the tree. And we then look for two factors of 40, specifically a factor pair. And if one of those factors is a prime number, even better. Well, 40 can be written as 2 times 20. Now, 2 is a prime number, and so we circle the 2, and this means we stop here at this branch. Our next job is to repeat this, but this time we do it with the number 20. Well, 20 is 2 times 10, and 2, as we saw, is a prime number, so we can circle this 2, and we stop this branch here. Let's do this again for the number 10. Let's write 10 as 2 times 5. Well, we know 2 is a prime number, so we're going to circle it, but we also know that 5 is a prime number, so we circle 5 too. Now, of course, when we circle a number, we stop that branch, so we can't go any further. Now, a common misconception here is to think that simply by drawing the factor tree that we're finished. And another mistake is to write these as a list with commas, or as a sum with addition signs. But remember, the process is called writing a number as a product of its prime factors, where product means times. So we have to write these using multiplication signs. We take each prime number that we've circled. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Now we could write this in index form as 2 cubed times 5, but the question hasn't specified here. So either form is absolutely fine. Note that we don't actually need to work this out. If we were to work it out, it would just give us the original number of 40. And you might also have noticed that we needn't have started with the factor pair 2 and 20. We could have used 4 and 10 and got the same result. So 4 times 10 is 40, then 4 is 2 times 2, and we circle our 2s. Similarly, 10 is 2 times 5, and we circle the 2 and the 5, and once again we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. Let's have a look at another example. This time we're going to write 120 as the product of its prime factors, but the question has specified to give our answer in index form. We begin, of course, with 120 at the top of our tree, and we split it into a factor pair. Now, I see that 120 is an even number, and so it's divisible by 2, and I know that 2 is prime. So I'm going to do 2 times 60 as my first factor pair, and then I'm going to circle the number 2, since it's prime. Since I've popped a circle around the number 2, I'm done with this branch, and so I move on to the number 60. Once again, 60 is an even number, and so it's divisible by 2, and in fact, it's the result of 2 times 30. So I circle the 2 and I stop that branch there. We now move on to 30. 30 is still even, so I write it as 2 times 15 and pop a circle around the 2 and then I go back to the 15. Now 15 is not even, 
So I'm going to go up to the next prime number, which is 3. And I know that 15 is 3 times 5. Well, in fact, 5 is also a prime number. So I can circle both branches and I stop here. Of course, this doesn't mean I'm finished. I need to take all my prime numbers and I need to write them as a product, where product means times. And so I can say that 120 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. But I'm still not finished. I need to write my answer in index form, which means I need to use powers or indices. And so I write this as 2 cubed times 3 times 5, and now we're finished. 120, as the product of its prime factors, is 2 cubed times 3 times 5. So now that we have the basic concept, let's look at a few examples. Now it's your turn to have a go. Make your way over to the activity pack called the Prime Factors Worksheet Pack. Now on this pack, there are a lot of numbers for you to attempt to write as a product of their prime factors. I wouldn't do them all. I would say four or so from each list should be enough. There's also a challenge at the bottom of this page. Pause the video, work your way through the prime factors worksheet back, give yourself a challenge if you feel like it, and then come back and we'll work through the challenge together. So let's have a look at the challenge. We have a number p, which written as its product of its prime factors is 2 times 3 squared times a. And we want to find the value of a, or a value of a, that makes p a square number. So p is 2 times 3 squared times a. We might notice that 3 squared is itself a square number. It's the product of 3 times 3, which is 9. We have 2, so what could a be so that p itself is a square number? Well, since we've already got 3 squared, if we can make 2 squared, then p will be 2 squared times 3 squared. So let's try letting a be equal to 2. Then p is equal to 2 times 3 squared times 2, which is 2 squared times 3 squared. So how do we know that this is a square number? Well, we can write it as 2 times 3 all squared. This is the same thing, or 6 squared. And by definition, this absolutely must be a square number. So a could be equal to 2. But were there any other options? Well, in fact, there were. What about if we let a be equal to 8? Then p is 2 times 3 squared times 8. But of course, 8 is itself 2 cubed. So this becomes 2 to the fourth power times 3 squared, which we can then write as 2 squared times 3 all squared. And once again, by definition, that has to be a square number. And so two of the values we could have chosen for a are 2 and 8. Of course, there are others, but these are the two smallest values of a we could have chosen. And so we've now concluded this video. We've learned how to write a number as a product of its prime factors by using a factor tree. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you back here soon.